Hello, my name is Anthony Hall and this is a short tutorial on how to set up a basic contents directory, how to use the Lightwave layers, insert basic shapes into the layers, use the move and rotate tools and then finally set the pivot point up for the, for the rotation of the shapes. Before you start creating anything in Lightwave it's really important that you create what's called a contents directory. So I've created a small folder on my desktop called it LW for Lightwave Shapes. If you double click it what I've done inside is I've created three folders images, objects and scenes. So these three folders uh, are a starting point to set up your contents directory. You put all your images that you want to use for texturing in images. The objects that you create in Modeler will go in here and then when you send everything through to your scenes you'll save your scenes in here it's really important that you set this up also if you're saving any images into the folders or objects once you start saving it's really important that you don't start changing any of the names of the images otherwise Lightwave won't be able to find them because you've changed the name of them so it kind of links it as an alias in a way so it's really important that you start by creating a main folder with these three folders in when you've done that if you go to edit set contents directory from your desktop if I go down and find uh, LW shapes press OK and now I've told like if that's where I'm working from so in each window you get a drag side to side a rotation you don't get in the top a zoom and a maximize and minimize uh, these are not clickable. A lot of students click like mad and nothing happens. You literally grab and you drag side to side, side to side, up and down with the windows and then minimize and maximize. And if you get all over the shot, best thing to do is on your keyboard, just press A and it will center everything. Okay, so in your perspective view, uh, the rotation again is up and down, side to side. Uh, what I'm going to do is simply fill these layers at the top, so if you can see these layers panel at the top, with different shapes. Now they're chopped in half because one's your foreground and one's your background. So what I tend to do is go over to the window, layers panel, and you can bring up uh, the layers panel here. So this represents this box. Currently I haven't named my project, and if I click down I've got no layers that are active. So if I start by just simply clicking on the box tool and what I usually do is draw out in the top and pull up in the back or the side and then you can view it in your perspective view. Uh, at the top here where it says perspective view you can view how you view it as well. I like to have it on texture wire so you see your edges, points and your polygons as well. Why it's active and you've got this orange box, these little icons, if you press N on your keyboard it will bring up your numerical and then you can put in the exact coordinates. So for this I'm just going to keep it as one meter squared so I'm going to put one meter okay so I've put one meter in each of the diameters for the X, Y and Z that's the positioning on the actual grid so if I was to put a zero in each of these it will center it into the center of the grid uh, and below it uh, this is if you want the edges to be smoother and extra polygons to be added to your uh, to your shape but for for this exercise I'm not going to do that uh, when you're happy you shut it the panel down and press space bar on your keyboard to deselect it so now what I've got is uh, a cube in layer one and it's set in if you see in layer one it's actually got uh, a little dot in the corner to represent something's in there uh, in the actual layers panel where it says untitled if I double click it it will bring up change the name so I'm just going to call it cube it's really really important that you name these layers because if you're working with like 20 30 layers or even more a lot more and you just leave them as untitled you're just gonna have untitled one two three four and so on so when you're in actual trying to find stuff it'll be really difficult so I'm just gonna call it cube and there I've got it in layer one now now I've got something in my scene my, uh, my scene I'm just gonna go to file 
and I'm going to save the object and if you notice looks I've set it up it goes straight through to that extension of objects and I'm just going to call it shapes save it and then what I can do is click in the next available layer and you'll notice the cube disappears it's still there it's just not active so if you want to see it the best thing to do is click on the the little tick for the B and it will actually put it in the background as, to show you where it is uh, next I'm just going to go down I'm going to click the ball press numerical and uh, I'm going to leave it as uh, a globe and I'm going to leave the settings exactly the same the same now because the radius and it's got diameter to it the actual size comes from the middle so it's 500 mil from the middle outwards for both sides which makes up that one meter uh, circ circumference so it's the same size and I want them all to be the same size anyway so I'm just going to leave that the same press space bar then I'm going to jump to my modify tab where it's got the move and the drag and stuff and I'm going to click on move and then simply in my top view I'm just going to move it to the side so I've got both my shapes at the side of each other I'm going to double click the actual layer uh, just call it ball and if I want to see them both if you click the top one with which is the F it will show them both or you can click hold shift and click that way so shifts kind of the way best way to use for selecting them I'm using a Mac I think on a PC I'm not sure if it's set up for right mouse click or not so I'm going to carry on this process of just placing shapes into layers and uh, making a, a little pyramid of shapes so I'm going to another blank one I'm going to click the little B to put them in the background go to create use a disk press numerical just going to switch it I'm going to leave everything the same because again it's got a radius so it's 500 mil to make it a, each side to make it a, a meter and I'm going to press the Y so it fits in nicely and again you, if you wanted to you can change all these and you can add segments uh, and you can add more uh, segments to the side as well if you want to make it a different shape because as I go down in shapes it becomes it don't become a disc anymore it comes different hectagons and different types of shapes so it's a really good thing to know that if you reduce the size it makes different shapes it's the same with the ball tool as well and quite a few other tools but I'm gonna leave it like it is why it's active if I want I can just literally click in the center and move it to the side that way rather than using the move tool I'm gonna to drop it double click the layer call it disk and now I've got three and if like I said before you can have a click on the F to bring them all up hold shift and click the other two to put them in the background and again hold shift if you want to select them all okay let's keep going and uh, we'll go for a put them in the background first we'll go for a, a cone numerical through the Y so it's it's the top part sticking up leave everything the same drop the selection modify move this time I'm just going to drag it up in the in the back view I'm just going to sit it on top and make a little kind of pyramid of shapes like so double click call it cone go to the next one next blank layer click the little B at the top create tab uh, now the next one there's a capsule uh, and under the more there's lots of different other ones wedge is quite a nice object the only thing with wedge is it doesn't bring a preview which is quite I don't really like but if you leave the preset and again it's 500 by 500 which is a radius of one meter it'll bring this this shape up uh, so if it comes through any shapes at all and you think well it's too big so what you can do is you can go to modify and there's a, a size and you can size it down switch to the move move it up uh, then if you want to rotate with the rotate wherever you click it rotates from okay so what I'm doing is just clicking rotating and dragging so for this shape as well I'm just gonna resize it a bit bigger to whatever size I kind of want it to be and again R on your keyboard so even if you press R on your keyboard it's shortcut to, sp to spin it around as well so move rotate 
to where you want it. Uh, so that'll do. I'm happy with that. Let's double click it. Call it wedge. And then one more. And create tab. We'll go for gemstone. Bring numerical up. And you get a nice little gemstone with all the settings here. So you can change the, what the gemstone looks like as well. The height, the width. But for this, uh, I'm going to leave it like it is. Just going to move it. Uh, I'm going to place this at the top. Give it a name. And so what I've got now is if I press a little F is a little pyramid of shapes and they've all got their own their own names so if I just go to file and save just to update my save so currently what I've got is all my objects ready to go through to layout uh, what I do need to do and this will be in the next video is the basic texturing of these objects if I drop this selection, the last thing that I do is if I go to the Layers tab and on it it says Center Pivot. So I'm going to click Center Pivot and then click Pivot Tool. And what it's done is it's put the rotational point for each of these objects in the center of the object. So when we're in Layout, when you get the gizmo that lets you rotate, it will actually be in the center of the object. If you don't do this, all, this, all the rotational points for the object will be in the center of the grid and it can be really difficult if you're trying to rotate. So something you need to do is make sure that all objects, the pivot points are in the right place before you take them through. For instance, if it was a door, you'd put the pivot point, you'd move it to where the hinge would be so it would open like a door. So that's the very basics of setting layers up and the pivot point ready for texturing.